What if school kids could ride a magic carpet to school swift, smooth, silent, with no tailpipe and no exhaust fumes? Alas, magic carpets don't exist anywhere except in cartoons, but electric school buses do, and they come pretty close. School districts around the U.S. are starting to convert their fleets from dirty diesel buses to pollution-free electric ones, sparking a transformation in how the country's 25 million school kids get to school every day. Welcome to Zone Tech. In this video, we are going to talk about the push to electrify America's school buses. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. The move would significantly change how children experience going to school since it would replace the sweet noxious smell of diesel with the whiz and wear of electric motors under the floor of the school bus. Orders have increased more than threefold since the start of 2021, and the Biden administration hopes to hasten the rollout even further with a Wednesday announcement of the recipients of $965 million in subsidies for the purchase of electric and low-emission buses around the nation. Some advocates say they are hopeful they can electrify the entire American school bus fleet by 2030. Proponents argue that school transportation is a natural candidate for electrification, since the buses operate on fixed routes with regular brakes that can be used to charge batteries. They say the children most dependent on school buses to get to classrooms, students of color, and lower-income families also suffer disproportionately from asthma and other illnesses that are worsened by constant exposure to diesel fumes. Studies also show that exposure to pollution worsens school performance. Before making the announcement in Seattle with Vice President Harris, the head of the Environmental Protection Administration, Michael Regan, informed reporters that we are permanently transforming school bus fleets across the United States. In front of a brand new bus, Harris said, this bus symbolizes so much about our collective investment in our future. It is about our investment in our kids' education, health, and welfare. Although the upfront cost of electric school buses can be up to four times more expensive than their rumbling combustion-powered forebears, advocates and climate-friendly policymakers are trying to find ways to make up the difference. Already, fuel costs are lower, and so is maintenance, since electric buses have fewer parts that wear down. Diesel engines account for nearly a quarter of the U.S. transportation sector's greenhouse gas emissions. The burning of fuel is a significant source of dangerous pollutants, such as particulate matter and ground-level ozone, which can cause respiratory problems in children. The Biden administration is attempting to encourage more affordable electric vehicles by supporting the American battery industry and offering incentives to school districts in the hopes that additional bus orders will help drive down prices. The awards announced on Wednesday were funded by the bipartisan infrastructure bill from the previous year, and it also allows an additional $4 billion to the purchase of electric and low-emission school buses over the following four years. The result has been a burst of electric school bus purchases across the United States, including in the Washington region. The school system is paying the company $1.3 million annually for 12 years to lease the buses and provide electricity for them, which it says is the same as it costs to buy, fuel, and maintain diesel buses. This sets an example for the entire country. In October, more than a dozen of the brand new electric buses were parked in front of Walter Johnson High School in Bethesda. They would have idled up a smelly cacophony if they had been conventional gallons of diesel. Instead, they kept their silence completely. When they pulled away, they made a slight whir, then a whine as the electric motors whisked them forward. The seating conditions inside the buses were identical to those from many years ago. However, the new seat fabric and the wet outside air could be smelled clearly, and the conversation was audible. The buses looked almost identical to the diesel ones, whose technology has hardly changed in a generation, save from their beautiful yellow paint. One of the biggest bus manufacturers in the nation, Thomas Built Buses, constructed the body. Proterra, a manufacturer of heavy-duty electric vehicles like transit buses, provided the electric guts, the batteries, and the motors. There were electronic components in the front, where the engine would typically be. It's running now. There's no boom, boom, boom starting up like on a normal diesel bus. On a diesel bus that we have the motor and the engines right up front and all that noise is coming straight to you. With this, with it being an EV bus, you don't have that noise anymore. I got on the electric bus and I was like, oh, this is the Cadillac of Cadillacs. That's the future over there. 
Highland has constructed a lengthy new row of electric chargers at the Bethesda Bus Depot for the school system, where the buses recharge their batteries when they have downtime. Doing so was a major undertaking. The depot used to have enough electric cables to keep on the lights and air conditioning for a couple of offices. According to Messentire, it now requires nearly the same amount of power as 10 big hospitals. One challenge to electrifying the nation's school bus fleet is that doing so would demand much more grid capacity than is now available. This needs more transformers, substations, and high voltage cables, as well as a larger effort that will cost time and money. The same issue affects other electrification efforts, which call for greater use of electric vehicles and a switch to electric versions of gas-powered appliances like stoves and furnaces. Skeptics of efforts to electrify buses say the extra cash could better be spent on teachers, classrooms, or lower taxes. They question whether the current price premium makes them first in line. Some say going slower might save money for school districts in the long run if other industry efforts can do the work of bringing down the price of batteries over the next few years. However, state-level initiatives are moving even more quickly than those at the federal level. A bill requiring the purchase of only electric school buses by 2025 was passed in Maryland in March. New York mandated the same by 2027 in April. Since Maryland buses are required to have a 12-year working life, the change won't happen right away. To connect a port near the back end of an electric bus to a charger with a cable, the driver must pirouette backward into a parking area at an angle. It takes roughly four hours to charge completely from nothing. Each bus has a range of roughly 140 kilometers. Unlike municipal buses, which have longer routes and higher daily demand, the typical bus route in Montgomery is only around 65 miles. Thus, there is minimal concern about running out of power. Municipal buses are also more difficult to electrify. The market has changed significantly since 2014, when the first few electric school buses entered operation, according to industry analysts. It's where the market is going and where the demand is moving, said Sue Gander, the head of the Electric School Bus Initiative at the World Resources Institute, which is tracking the rollout of electric buses and advocating for policies that encourage their use. The buses have the lowest amount of greenhouse emissions as any bus on the road, about half as much per mile, on average, she said, after accounting for emissions from the electricity generated to power them. Their carbon footprint will further drop as renewable energy supplants electricity generated from fossil fuels in the years to come, she said. Within this next decade, we are going to be seeing electric school buses as the option of choice, she said. So that's it for today. What do you think of our video? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear more from us, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications before you go. Thank you for watching.